Do you know the kind of mom you've always wanted to be? I think all of us inside have a vision, if we know that we want to be mothers, of what type of mother, how hands-on, are we going to be permissive, are we going to be controlling with our kids, are we going to be real involved in their lives and do all of those activities with them, or are we going to be more hands-off and let them discover friends on their own? So I knew that I wanted to be super involved in a lot of activities that my kids were involved in. But I had to juggle that with career, and I'm going to explain in this episode of My Working Mom Journey how I did that. I'm Mocha Mom, welcome to Working Mom Warrior, where we help you stop the stress and dump the self-judgment by relating to stories of other moms who share their successes and their failures. I'm sharing my Working Mom journey in this series, and this time I'm explaining to you how I found that right balance and I incorporated all the things in my life that I always knew I wanted to do as a mom. I had found the right person, and it was actually in Miami every weekend just about we would spend curled up on the couch like watching movies and I thought it would be so easy to have a couple little rugrats running around while we're doing this I no longer feel like I'm missing anything if I'm not going out I mean I spent years in LA covering the entertainment industry and interviewing celebrities on red carpets and going to parties after movie premieres and living this kind of glamorous life and I had a great time doing that but I knew I didn't want to do that forever I knew I wanted to go back to the Midwest and be a suburban mom and my son came along and at that point my significant other and I had both lost our jobs in Miami and moved back to the Chicago suburbs because I was yearning to go back to where I grew up where I had lots of relatives and friends and felt like I would be surrounded by great support and I was in a place physically where I wanted to be when I had my children and I was emotionally ready to have them and so I just was like I'll just take a few years off so I actually had a conversation with a friend of mine, someone who I had become very close friends with in college, and he had followed my career trajectory because, you know, I had leaned on him as a close friend sometimes when I needed somebody to talk to. I have a lot of close friends like that that I really leaned on a lot over the years to talk to about, you know, any crisis going on in my life and that's what really helped me get through a lot of things. I'm very open, kind of an open book about a lot of things. I don't hold a lot of things back and that's why I think it helps and I ask other people to kind of do the same thing because I know how it has helped me. So I told him, you know, this decision either just before or just after the baby was born, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to take off. Maybe, you know, when he goes to kindergarten in about five years, I'll go back. Well, I realize now that was very naive. It is extremely difficult to go back into your career, many careers, I don't know about all careers, if you just take that many years off and you're not involved at all. But I just thought that's what I was gonna do and he said, what? He was completely shocked, he was completely taken aback. I can't believe after all this effort, after all your struggling, after how important this was to you all those years and all this time of building up your career and you have something you could go back to. I didn't really ask when I left at the station. They gave me a going away party, but I didn't feel like I couldn't go back if I if I wanted to. I, I just told them I'm going to go have my baby and I didn't really specify if I was coming back or when and I was freelancer so they didn't really worry about it and I didn't really worry about it and I just sort of made this decision and my friend just thought that was crazy just crazy okay he was a man close friend but he you know and I don't know if my girlfriends would have felt the same way well I kind of told all of them and I didn't get that same reaction from them but he just knew how hard I had worked I mean I had struggled and persevered I mean I literally in the days of sending out videotapes in the mail to try to get a job in TV news I had sent out well over a thousand I had gone and driven around the country and met with news directors just to try to shake their hand, hand them a tape, meet them face to face, literally dozens of different cities. I mean, I had worked my 
ass off just to get into my field because I really knew this was something that I wanted to do, that I was passionate about. And I didn't care that I was getting rejected. There was a, a one main reason, and I'm not gonna go into all that, but it had to do with the fact that I had long hair and back then nobody in TV news had long hair. It was kind of crazy. And so when I finally got my big break, one of my big breaks, it was because I, my friend convinced me to wear a wig and have short hair. I know that's kind of crazy, but I'll tell that story in, in another video. Because this is about my motherhood journey. And my motherhood journey began really when I made this decision and told everybody without thinking that anyone was going to have a negative reaction. It wasn't really negative, it was disbelief. And But I was sure enough about my decision that his reaction didn't sway me, it just surprised me. And he didn't say like, what are you crazy? At least I don't remember him saying, you're never going to be able to go back to your field after five years. And I didn't really consider that. So here I was you know, breastfeeding, kind of going through all the emotions that new moms do. I definitely didn't go through postpartum and I'm grateful for that. But I was, you know, struggling with this whole idea of, oh my gosh, you know, do I have enough milk? And my baby was small and, and you know, sleep when the baby sleeps. And I actually did that and my baby slept a lot and I slept a lot. I really needed to recover, you know. I had some complications, not anything really severe, but I did have some complications with the birth that didn't affect the baby but affected me and, and I didn't have a c-section but I, I did feel like I needed to recover and and I let things go I mean I didn't deal with a lot of stuff in life in my house and you know I just took things as they came and I focused on my baby and me and then I started kind of getting into a groove you know the breastfeeding got easier I ended up breastfeeding both my children you know for a little over a year I was really proud of that because I definitely had a really hard time with latching on and everything in the beginning with my son. And eventually, after about six months, I realized I wanted to go up to the station and just introduce them to my baby because I had seen other moms do this. There weren't very many moms in the TV news department, but in other departments like in sales or in promotion, you know, moms would take off, have their baby and then come back after their maternity leave and, and go, oh, meet my baby. And so I was like, oh, you know, when, you're, when your baby's six months, you know, he's the most adorable thing in the whole world and you want everyone to meet him, everyone you know. So, um, and I loved it and I missed, you know, my coworkers and my workplace. I really had a good feeling about that whole place there and um, I'm trying to remember if that's when there was a different news director yes so the my my main boss you know the person in charge of like hiring and firing um, the person who had brought me in had left and there was a new person in that place but then my immediate supervisor was the one I got in touch with and said hey I'm gonna come up and bring the baby and he's like oh it'll be great to see you and so I came up and there's the baby you know in, in his little um, car seat and everyone's ooing and eyeing and and so I'm having a conversation with my supervisor and he's like oh we really miss you we'd love to see you come back and I said that's really sweet you know it made me feel good that I had been doing good work for them and they valued it and I said I loved working here and I do miss it but I really want to be hands-on with my baby you know if I was gonna work I would only want to work like one or two days a week especially coming up here you know it's such a long commute and he's like oh well I think we could arrange that that was my next like blown away moment of my motherhood journey. What? You think you could arrange that? And he's like, yeah. But the new news director doesn't even know me. And he's like, oh, but he, he, you know, trusts me and my judgment. And he's seen some of your work from before. And let me handle it. Let me talk to him and see what I can do. And I'm like, one or two days. Like, let's start with one day. And he's like, yeah, yeah. Let me work on that. Now, I will take a step back and explain in my field, maybe it's not like this in other fields, probably not. I do a job where I could go in at two in the afternoon and sit in a story meeting where all of the reporters and the producers and the people in charge in the newsroom talk about the news of the day and they assign different reporters to go out and do different stories and then that's it. You know, back in the day it would be you and a photographer. A lot of times nowadays it's just the reporter by themselves and they're doing their own shooting. But then it would be a reporter photographer team and they would talk about okay how are we gonna get this story ready and done in time for the 10 o'clock news so you know you start working on getting your 
interviews lined up, getting the information that you need, and then you 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 know fly out the door when you have something that you know is ready to shoot or sometimes you're just heading right over to the courthouse if it's a court case or right over to the highway if it's an accident but you're gathering your news gathering you're getting all the information you need all, all the facts and the in the interviews and and then you're coming back and then you're writing the story you're looking at all that and you're sometimes you're doing it in the car you know and then you get back and you're editing it and then you're going back out on location so you can do a live report and so by the time at 10 o'clock at night when the news is is airing you have finished your report your your photographer editor has finished putting it together you know the producer has it you're ready to to introduce it live from the scene and then when you're done you're you're done it's it's really nice that's one thing I like about television news there's nothing hanging over your head now there may be a follow-up the next day but somebody else can do that so you're literally done there's not like a million like open-ended pieces that you would have to tell somebody else or that wouldn't be done the next day because you're not there like you could work one day and complete a task that is its own task in and of itself and you don't need to do anything else if there's any follow-up you just leave a few names and numbers with the assignment desk and then they tell the reporter who might do the follow-up the next day you know you have to make sure that you put you know your story on the web and and then you go home so I could literally work one day a week do what I loved and then not be there the rest of the time and nobody was like oh, you know if Diane was here then this this thing wouldn't have you know fallen apart if someone had a question for me they could just call me but another reporter could easily step in and follow up the next day so my industry luckily lent itself to me working one day a week and my immediate supervisor talked the new news director into letting me come on and do that and it was awesome you know here I had a six-month-old baby didn't want to be away from him but one day a week was actually kind of nice you know and so I did have to pump you know in the bathroom they didn't have any facilities we had to put our makeup on in the bathroom at this station you know they there there are not glamorous facilities at a lot of TV stations like a lot of people think but it was great I was able to pump enough for at least that one day and I and I hired a nanny at the time my husband was working from home so I thought why have my baby go actually I did start a daycare I did start him at daycare and for me daycare didn't work I I had too many not good vibes not that it was a bad place but it just wasn't the place I wanted my baby so after a few weeks I was like no this isn't right so then I found like a nanny type person and had my baby at home so because my husband had to work when he was home and he couldn't take care of a you know six month old but the, the nanny could at least not be there alone with you wondering is this person really caring for my baby properly because my husband kind of check in on her you know he was upstairs in his office and then every so often he could go down and, and see what they were doing so this was how my working mom journey started balancing career and kids can definitely be tricky but it's great when you feel like you got it under control of course while you're doing that you want to make sure that you are encompassing in your life all of the things that you always wanted to do as part of motherhood and that's what I explain in the next episode of my working mom journey so check it out and don't forget to spread a little of your own love to another mom who needs it